All right, video two here in lesson 13, we are going to focus on histograms. And first, we need to discover what is the difference between a bar graph and a histogram. Because, friends, there is a difference. So, a bar graph and a histogram both have bars. So, that's the similarity. The difference is, and if you notice in the last one, in bar graphs, the bars don't touch. We have discrete data. So, this means, like, how many um, goals did you... Uh, were made in the soccer game. Well, you can't score two and a half goals. You can't score two and a third goals. You can score one goal, two goal, three goal, right? Discrete, like counting numbers. In continuous data, meaning when we're dealing with histograms, you can have like two and a half or one and a third. So if I'm talking like the amount of water in my cup, right? I could have one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, but I could also have like an ounce and a half or an ounce and three quarter, right? I can have all of those pieces in between. So liquid um, would be continuous. Weight is continuous, right? I might weigh 140 pounds, and that would be a good day. Um, or I could weigh 140.2 or 140.3, right? There's continuous. It doesn't just go from 140 to 141. So if you can have data in between, then you have the histogram and the bars are going to touch because there is no split in the data. So as we get into this, page 118... There, um, you see two different histograms with some data. There are two questions. I'd like you to go ahead and answer those two questions right now. Hit pause and answer those questions. Okay, so a similarity. If you look at them, you'll notice that these two graphs have the exact same shape. So same shape, right? They have the same bumps. And that's because they're the same data. If you use the exact same data, you're going to have the exact same graph. Well, what's the difference then? Well, did you look at the vertical axis? In the top one, you've got counts, right? The number of people that fall in there. And in the bottom, you have percents. So the vertical uh, axis is different in those two. And when you look at the observations regarding the shape, so you'll notice between under five years up to about, I don't know, 60, 64, something like that, it's pretty constant, and then it tails off. So I would say it tails to the right, or skewed right, you could use that word um, if we want to be, you know, mathematical, um, because that's where the tail is. When you get up over 65, that's when the percent really falls off. And notice the bars are touching, right? This is a histogram because, you know, you're not just 41 or 42. You could be 41 in two months, or 41 in two months and three days and four hours and 17 minutes and 32 seconds, right? So because there's that continuous action, that's why we have histograms. All right, turn the page to 119, and I'm going to ask you again to hit pause and answer those two questions. Okay, so we're looking at page 119. And the top, number three, what can be stated about the distribution of workers by age? Now, you could have 18 gajillion different answers for this. But when I look at this, I notice that between 25 and 54, those are the three tallest, right? So this is where the most workers are because those are the three tallest, tallest bars. And again, we're dealing with ages. That's why we have a histogram because we've got that continuous data thing going on. Um, but you could have other things like not many, 65 and up, or... Um, you know, you could say a bunch of things. Anything that you get from that graph is good. So that's, this thing is just what stuck out to me. Number four, can you estimate the total number of members in the workforce? And if you can, how? And I would say, yeah, right? So if we estimate each group, so from, oh man, I can't, can't write for nothing. If you estimate each group, so you know, 16 to 24 has got 22,000. And then you would say 25, 25 to 34 is 34,000, right? You could estimate each group and add them all together. And that would give you an estimate of the total number in the workforce, right? So you can get that data from that histogram. Let's turn the page to 120. And again, we have questions. So using the, the graphs on page 120, I would like you to answer questions 5, 6, and 7 at the bottom. All right, so looking at this one, and number five, looking at the number, so the top one, so we're looking at the number of unemployed civilians. How does the shape of this distribution different than that of the labor force on the previous page? Well, this one, if you notice that this, it all slides right. So I would say that this one, so the um, unemployed civilians, I would say it's definitely skewed right. 
However, when you look at the labor uh, on the previous page, on page 119, I would say, so the labor is uh, more symmetric. I mean, it's not perfectly symmetric, but it's way more symmetric than the unemployed civilians. Um, so that's kind of how they're different. And, of course, you could have other things, too. We're reading graphs. In number six, can you use the histogram of number of unemployed citizens to estimate the total unemployed? Yes, just like we did on that previous page. Estimate each group and add together. Each group and add. Now, so number seven um, might have seemed a little bit difficult because it says go back and find the total unemployment rate for 2012. All right, well, if you turn back to page 119, um, that's where the data is coming from in that teeny tiny, I mean, you've got to read those teeny tiny numbers at the top. And if you'll notice, um, the top line is the total for 16, oh my gosh, excuse me, 16 years and over. And if you go all the way to the right, you see percent of labor force under the unemployed. And that's where I get 8.1%. So the average, um, or the, 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 Everybody, unemployment rate is 8.1. Well, when you look at the unemployment rate chart on page 120, you'll notice that only the 16 to 24-year-olds are above that. It appears that the 25 to 34-year-olds are about equal to that, and then everybody else, 35 and up, is below that rate of 8.1%. So it's kind of interesting to see, you know, where the unemployment lies. So it mainly seems to lie um, in that 16 to 24 range. All right, on page 121, we're getting into frequency tables. So let's talk about what that means. Frequency, right, is how many times things happen. You know, if it happens three times, right, the frequency would be three. So we are now going to be given some data. So um, using this chart, um, wait, let me back up. So up till now, we've been given data and we've made charts from it because it's already been organized. So now we're going to get unorganized data. We have to organize it, then we can do a graph. All right, so that's basically the concept. So let me go ahead and um, take some pictures so we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, so you have your unorganized data here on the left where it says ages of carousel writers. And we are going to create a frequency table here on the right. So, a frequency table simply organizes our data. So, when I'm looking at the age, right, because that's what we're given. We're given ages of the carousel writers. Well, the smallest one, if I'm looking at all my numbers, I see that I have a 3, and that's my smallest. So, I start with a 3, and then I go to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And it's nice, you know, 12 is my oldest writer. Here is a 12. And that's how many lines they gave me, so isn't that nice? Now, I'm going to show you how I do this, and you can do it however you want, but as I go through, I say, okay, I usually look at the first line and say five and seven. I make tallies, five and seven. Then I go to my next line and say seven and six, and I make my tallies. And it'd be nice if you could see the separated tallies there. So I want you to time out, hit pause, fill in the rest of these tallies for this entire table. So I filled in my tallies. Now, once I have my tallies, I can go ahead and total them up. So my frequency is 2, 4, 5, 6, 4, 3, 1, 2, 0, and 1. And let me tell you, it is super important to check this. So you know that right, we had 30 numbers in our data set. So when you go to add, total up your frequencies, you better get 30. If you miss one or you count one twice, it's going to jack up all of your data. So Take the 13 seconds it's going to take you and double check your frequencies. Okay? So now that I have my frequencies, now I can take those and I can put them into a bar graph or a histogram, whatever is appropriate. So now hit pause, go to the bottom of your page, and create yourself a histogram with your ages of carousel writers. All right, so your histogram should have turned out like this, but a big thing is we have to label our axes. So on the bottom, right, these are the ages, and on the side, this is the frequencies, right, how often they occurred. So frequencies are frequency. You can do singular or plural. But it's important that you always have a title and that you have your axes labeled. Now, number five, find the average age, median, and median age. So to find the average, right, you can go back. There's 30 of them. Add them all up. Divide, and you should get a mean of approximately 6.23. And the median, we know they're in order, right, least to greatest. So when you look at your organized data, it's easier to find the median. You get a median of 6. 
So which is larger? Um, hopefully you notice 6.23 is bigger. And then looking at this, or you can use the whole, the, media, the mean is bigger than the median, but when you look at your data, is it skewed right, left, or symmetrical? Well, you see it peaks here, and then I've got 1, 2, 3 on the left, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the right. So it is skewed to the right. And if you go back to like page 62 or something, you will see that it says if the mean is greater than the median, then it is skewed right. So that all fits. All right, so I would like you now um, to go to page 122. So on page 122, you see this data set. Now we've got minutes customers waited for service. So when you look at this, um, the first two lines are done. So one person waited for uh, one minute, and that means the proportion of customers that was, um, since they had 50 people total, that's one divided by 50, which is 2%. So 2% of their customers waited one minute for service. Look for two minutes. There were three customers who waited for two minutes. So three divided by the total of 50 gives you 6.06, .06, which is 6%. So 6% of the people waited two minutes for service. I want you to go ahead and finish this table. Okay, so you can see my finished data, and I want to show you how I did this. So um, having the data up here, I went through and crossed them out as I counted them. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss any. So once I was done, I counted up. I had 50 numbers. Then I went over here, and I did my division, right? 6 divided by 50 is 0.12, um, 12%. So I figured all my percents, and then I added my percents because I wanted to make sure percent has to equal 100. So I wanted to make sure I didn't make any math mistakes there, and now I have my table filled out. So now that you have a completed table, go ahead and fill out, um, answer questions 1 through 10 at the bottom. All right, number 1, how long do most people wait for service? So you look at the biggest number is 12, and that is 5 minutes. Number two, what is the longest someone had to wait for the study? Well, nine minutes is the longest here. And the second part of that, does this mean nobody ever has to wait longer than nine minutes? And the answer to that is no, just not now, right? Not in this study. So the person before the study might have waited 45 minutes. But in the study that we did, those 50 people, the longest was nine minutes. It doesn't mean anything. How many people from this waited at least six minutes? Okay, so we are now focusing on at least six minutes. What does at least mean? Hopefully you got that of six or more. So when we're looking at how many people, so I go to my number of customers, six minutes is eight, seven minutes was five, eight minutes was four, and nine minutes was two. So 19 people waited at least six minutes, right? So six minutes or more. Number four, how many people didn't have to wait more than three minutes? So not more than three minutes would be one minute plus two minutes, right? The people plus the three minutes because not more than three is four or five, six, whatever. So the people, there was one person that did one minute. There were three people at two minutes and there were six at three minutes. So 10 people didn't have to wait more than three minutes. They all waited less than three, more than three, so three or less is what they waited. Number five, let me change color here. Number five, what does the total of the frequencies represent? Well, the total of the frequencies is 50, and it represents the total number in the study. Number six, what about the total of the proportions? Well, the total of the proportions is 100%, right? What is percent? 100% means all. So it's all of them. Number seven, what proportion of customers waits five minutes? Well, if you go to five, you got 12 people, and 12 people is 24% of our data. Number eight, if you were to select a customer at random, what is the probability that they wait five minutes? So remember, generally in probability, we answer that as a decimal. So the proportion is 24%. We would say the probability is 0.24. Number nine, what proportion wait at least six minutes? So again, remember, at least six is six or more. So if I look at those proportions, I've got 16% plus 10% plus 8% plus 4%, which gives me a total 
of 38% is my proportion who wait at least six minutes. And then for number 10, what would that probability be? Well, 38% would lead to a probability of 0.38. At this time, on page 123, on page 123, there, is, uh, there are two charts, and they go from the data you just created. So I want you to go ahead and hit pause and create the, the, um, the histograms from the data we just collected. All right, so here's my completed, um, this is the top one. So notice that they already give me, uh, let me change colors. They already give me the frequencies over here, but I had to put in minutes weighted at the bottom. And they already gave me also a title. So those things are important. So um, I made my histogram. And again, we're talking, now we're talking about minutes. And you can have a partial of a minute, right? It's called seconds. So these are histograms. They will touch. And this is symmetrical. All right here, it goes to the middle and it tails off kind of the same each way. So we do have a symmetrical drawing. At the bottom, um, now we have the proportion of customers here on, in the vertical axis, but again, we're at minutes weighted on the bottom. Again, it's symmetrical, looks pretty nice. So the similarity, they're both symmetrical, they look pretty much the same. The difference would be the vertical, oh, excuse me, the vertical axis. Okay, so last one, I want you to go to page 124, and I want you to do this one. So 124 gives you the unorganized data. Create the frequency distribution and then create a histogram. And I will have my finished products up um, when you're finished. All right, so I went through and um, filled in my number of smokers as well as my proportions. Um, now I had 33 smokers, and 33 is an ugly number, meaning that when I divided, I, I rounded to the nearest percent, but none of these came out nicely. So I had, so these were all rounded, and if you add up your proportion, well, if I add up my proportions, I got 99% um, because I didn't take it out. So if you wanted to be closer to 100%, you'd want to go to like one or two decimal places to make it nicer. But, you know, I was, um, I was going the easy way out. Uh, my frequency distribution, or my, my histogram, I got my labels, I've got my frequency and my ages, and then I've got my, um, my table. Now, the first one, uh, which way is this skewed, or is it symmetrical? Well, right here is my tallest one, and it kind of, you know, we've got this little blurb here at 14, but for the most part, it kind of goes this way, and it's very, very quick decrease. So because the tail is mostly on the left, I would say this is skewed left. And then in number two, when you find the average is about 14.5, and the median is 15. And if you go back, you will notice that if the median is larger, you are skewed to the left. So I believe that takes care of um, histograms. Um, if you look at pages 125 all the way through 128, um, it gives you some uh, help with Excel in dealing with these concepts. So thank you. That's video number two. Uh, have a good night.